Before felling any trees, find out which environmental regulations apply and make sure that you have the necessary permits. When you've decided to fell a tree, you should think about what you can do to prevent accidents. Take note of everything that can affect safety. Are there any roads, overhead lines or buildings nearby? If so, and you're a beginner, you should leave the job to someone with more experience. If you know that people often pass through the area, you should set up warning signs. Assess the tree and take note of the various factors that can affect the felling. Is the tree leaning? Which way is the wind blowing? Considering the surroundings and ease of subsequent work, which direction should it be felled in? Make sure that there are no people within the safety radius, which is at least twice the length of the tree that you intend to fell. Stand by the tree and decide exactly which direction you want it to fall in. Choose a feature from the surroundings as a guide. Clear obstructive undergrowth from around the tree. Remove branches and other obstacles on the ground. On both sides of the tree, you should be able to walk unobstructed at an angle away from the falling tree and remain there at a safe distance. The general idea of directional felling is that you first saw a directional notch which determines which direction the tree will fall. The directional notch can be made in a variety of ways. The one we're showing here is called the open directional notch. Firstly, you make a top cut into the stem at an angle of about 60 degrees. Saw to a depth of about 20 to 25 percent of the tree's diameter. Then make a horizontal undercut to meet the top cut. Next, you saw a horizontal felling cut slightly above the level of the undercut. It's important that you stop sawing just before you reach the directional notch, leaving what is called a hinge. The hinge guides the tree as it falls. The hinge should be 10% of the tree's diameter, or at least two centimeters wide. How you use the saw when felling is decided in part by the thickness of the tree. First, let's look at what you do when the bar is longer than the diameter of the tree. Stand with your legs apart and lean against the tree trunk with your shoulder. To avoid an unnecessarily high stump, make the directional notch low. Hold the saw at the correct angle and sight towards the physical feature in the surroundings that you selected. It should coincide with the felling sights on the top of the saw. Give the saw full throttle and start sawing. From time to time, check that you're keeping the correct angle and direction. Stay in the same position and make the undercut. Make sure that you meet the top cut exactly. Now it's time for the felling cut. Use either a pushing or a pulling chain. Saw until you have enough room to push in a breaking bar. Make sure you don't touch the breaking bar with the chain when you continue sawing. Leave a hinge that is as even in thickness as possible. Remove the saw and work the bar until the tree starts to fall. The breaking bar is a felling tool for smaller trees. It prevents the tree from falling in the wrong direction and from pinching the blade while sawing. If you're not used to using a chainsaw, we recommend that you first get acquainted with the saw by practicing a while on a suitable log. There are some basic rules for using a chainsaw. Hold it firmly in both handles and hold your thumbs and fingers right around the handles. Make sure you hold your left thumb under the front handle to reduce the force of a possible kickback. 
It's good to have respect for the saw, but don't be afraid of it. If you hold it close to your body, it won't feel as heavy, and you'll be more balanced and in better control of the saw. For the best balance, stand with your feet apart. You can saw with both the upper and the lower edge of the bar. When using the lower edge, you're sawing with a pulling chain, which means that the chain pulls the saw away from you. Using the upper edge of the chain, you're sawing with a pushing chain, and the chain pushes the saw towards you. Protect your back by not working in a bent over position. Bend your knees instead if you're working at a low level. When moving, make sure the chain is not rotating by activating the chain brake or turning off the engine. For longer distances, of course, use the bar guard. Now let's look at what you do with a larger tree. Just like before, you create a good working environment. You might need to remove some of the branches from the bottom of the trunk. The safest way to do this is with a pulling chain, moving from above downwards. Use the trunk as a protection between you and the saw. Never prune higher than shoulder height. If the tree has buttress roots, it may be easier if you remove them. Here, the bar is shorter than the diameter of the trunk, so a slightly more complicated felling technique is required. If you're not particularly experienced, it's wise to have somebody with you who is. As the bar doesn't reach through the trunk, you have to complete the directional notch from the other side. Make sure that the new cuts meet up with the old ones as closely as possible. What you're going to do now is called a plunge cut. With full throttle, start by inserting the lower part of the bar nose into the trunk, just behind the intended hinge. Be careful not to touch the tree with the upper part of the bar nose. When the tip of the saw has moved into the trunk a little bit, turn the saw carefully until it is parallel with the directional notch. Press the bar into the tree. Then saw away from the hinge a small distance, approximately the width of the bar. This is to prevent you from sawing into the hinge when you turn the saw around. Saw carefully around the trunk. When you've passed the middle, insert a felling wedge, which is the best tool for felling large trees. Keep sawing until the bar is parallel with the directional notch on the other side. If the tree has rot damage, you have to be very careful and preferably get help from an experienced person if you're not that skilled yourself. If the trunk looks damaged or abnormal, there may be a rot problem. The rotten section of the tree is miscolored and feels spongy. As rot weakens the tree, you have to make the hinge bigger to get the tree to fall safely. You should also get assistance from someone with experience if the tree gets stuck in another tree on the way down. Don't leave the tree unguarded if you have to call for help. <laughs> 